Hello everybody and welcome to the Pin Collector channel. My name is Dan and I've got one of my peeps in the park and son-in-law Corey with me tonight. Hello. So we're going to do several different things tonight. Number one, I've got some blind boxes I want to open because I'm going to do some pin trading with Corey here in just a minute and we need to see if I have any duplicates in these boxes. So we'll start with the two boxes and that's going to be the new dress series from Box Lunch. So I know you've seen some of my other dress series. Not a huge princess collector, but the dresses are just really cool. The lots of color, they've done them very well. And this second set is actually the princess's second dresses. It's not their gowns. I'll hold it up here to the camera and maybe you can see it a little bit. And as always, I'll put some better pictures of the pins up as we go along. So we'll go ahead and get these started. Matter of fact, I'll open one and Corey can open one and that'll kind of speed up our process a little bit and save your time. Now since I don't have any in this set and I only bought two, chances of getting a duplicate in this set are fairly slim, I hope. One would like to believe that, right? <laughs> yeah, the randomization surely is a little bit you, better than if, that. If you get if you get a bunch of duplicates this time, then I think the next time you go, you need to, to mix them all up on the rack and then take two. That's out. true. And another thing about the dress pins is they've always been pretty good sized pins. Uh, and the ones with their gowns use a lot of glitter in the pin. But uh, we'll see what these are like. You want to go first? Sure. Pop yours out of there. All right, so a lot of glitter still. It is a lot of glitter. Let's see. Okay. Okay, that's going to be this one right here. Try to get a focus in on it there. I may have to put your other hand behind it. Sometimes that'll, that'll help. Yeah, I really caught it for just a little bit. But uh, I'll put a better picture of it up there like I always do. But I'm not real sure whose dress this is. So, so pink, pink and white. Pink and white. Pink and white. Uh, maybe I mean it looks Cinderella-ish like yeah, if you but, look at the shoulders yeah but Cinderella's dress is Hers always blue right? yeah and it's down here blue but could that be Sleeping Beauty maybe 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 you know who it is once I get stumped every once in a while leave it down in the comments and let me know whose dress you think that is number two and they kind of have a Oh, yeah. Gun copper finish back. It's not a real shiny back. Well, now this one is silver. And that one's so, silver. So the different different, different materials. Yep. Different materials. Different materials. Of the pins. Interesting. Okay. And uh, this, of course, they all have the copyright Disney on them. Box lunch pins are fully tradable. So um, even though they're made by Loungefly, and this one, this actually happens to be, I believe. I think it's <laughs> boy I am I am getting really stumped on these but to be real I'm... honest with you with the X in it I think it might be Merida's a dress for Merida yeah. okay um, just because it has a little X right up at the top of the dress and you see that X a lot on Merida's stuff interesting and I see I can pick out Mulan's out of the collection of the eight pins that are available so I know it's not Mulan's but I'm thinking it might be Merida's but there once again not a big princess collector if you know whose dress this is let me know because it's going in my permanent collection I'd like to be able to tell people what exactly <laughs> what it is so put it down in the comments yeah the glitter on this one is purple almost like a sash that wraps around behind it I'm betting that's gonna be Merida Okay. We'll, we'll see what everybody else says. Somebody will tell me whose it actually is. Yes, indeed. Okay, so no duplicates there, so bad news for Corey. All right. But probably what he's more excited about is this next collection. There's a collection of 12 pins, and it is the Box Lunch Nightmare Before Christmas set. One bad thing about Box Lunch pins is whenever you buy a mystery box, they only come one pin per box, which you know if you get a mystery box from Disney, they generally come two pins per box but uh, only one pin per box. There's 12 pins in this collection and the last two pins, which are their chaser pins, have a glow in the dark element to them. Nice. So uh, kind of neat. So once again, we'll have him open one box and I'll open one box and we'll see what we get. 
and always the little blind bag inside. But again, box lunch is a little different than Disney. Disney doesn't usually give you these little tear points. And so their bags are a little bit harder to get into than box lunch. And Corey had to show first last time. So I'll show first this time. I always pull them out back to me. And on the back is pretty nice because they are actually embossed Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, as well as the Disney copyright Disney logo. So I like that. And just from the look and I'll Okay Cut off a little bit if there's a little bit of a uh, hiccup in the Video you'll know what it is and I've told you before I don't edit these videos So you get what you get. We're opening up the Nightmare Before Christmas boxes And I'm going to try to show you the back of this one without looking at the front of it just to see if you can kind of guess who that might be because I've got a pretty good guess. I'm thinking this is going to be an Oogie Boogie pin. Okay. And I am completely Ooh, wrong. Wow, it's one of the glow in the dark it ones. Is one of the, it is one of the glow in the dark ones. First one out of the box. That's awesome. So one of the chaser pins and it's Jack uh, standing yeah. in front of that big glow in the dark moon. It's pretty iconic. It's kind of the scene that you always see, right? It is kind of the scene you always see, or you'll see him, you know, standing up on that big curly on the cube. Hill, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, your turn. All right, here we go. I'll do the same thing here. I'll go with the back out. Okay, this one's not the same pin. Clearly, it's, it's got. It's not the same pin. It's got. Uh, it's got some gaps in it. So. Yeah, you can see. All right. All right, let's see what we got here. Out. We uh, are Jack and Sally. Jack and Sally, and another great pin. I mean, they only appear together one time in this set, it looks like. And that's it. Let's see if we can get it to focus on them here. Maybe. I'm trying. I don't know if I'm as good at this as you are. That's all right. Like I said, I'll put up some pictures of them as well. All right, so this last one, the third one, he's hoping for, I'm sure, a duplicate. Because Not necessarily. I mean, come on. You're trying to grow your collection. That's true. Let's see here. This will be the back. Now, see, this looks like the other pin. So it, it looks be. like it very well could be a duplicate. It, it looks The back of it looks just like the first one I pulled. So let's find out. Oh, my. And it is. It is the duplicate jack. What are the odds? With the glow in the dark. So randomization's not too great for these three boxes, but that's okay, because now I have another trader pin. One more to change. All right. And one of the main reasons Corey came to visit me today is because not only do they act as peeps in the park for me sometimes when I can't be there, but they can, but uh, we also try to get pins for each other whenever we can, and they happen to snag some limited edition Skyliner pins, which supposedly he brought tonight. So let's see if we can get a look at those. All right. Well, do we, so one is technically not limited edition. Okay. I, I think one is going to just be pin. considered a release year rack pin. Okay. And one is a limited edition, and they they. Uh, so so we're we uh, and if you're a pin collector, I'm sure it's the same way. We just kind of uh, you know periodically we'll pull up the Disney website or uh, or the Shop Disney app, and we'll just type in pin and just see what pops up. And every once in a while, something new is up there. Uh, a lot of times on limited edition pins, especially, um, they'll they'll be up for a day or two and then they're done. And uh, you know, especially if you're buying online only, we don't live anywhere near the Disney park, so we can't just go walk into a Disney park and scour store after store. We have to kind of take what we can get with Disney stores right. and other traders and online. And uh, sometimes they're just up for a minute, um, and then then they're gone. And that's how it was with these. They were up for a day or two. They were gone. We snagged the. That's kind of like the Skyliner it itself. It was up for a oh, day or two, and then it was that's, gone. That is uh, so. that's just terrible news. <laughs> so. uh, there you know, and and there are uh, three thousand of the limited edition pin, which is about how many people total are going to ever ride the Skyliner. <laughs> Again, right? Yeah. All I, right. Uh, I do understand that it's back up and running today, so I just wondered how okay, busy they news. actually are. Good news. <laughs> okay, so which one are we going with first? The actual we'll limited with, edition? We'll go with the rack pin Okay, first. let's do the rack pin first. So, here we go. This is a not, uh, not color 
color-coded rack pins, so don't know, you know, if they're out in the parks or not. A lot of times when they are, the stickers on the back will show you what price tier that the pins are at in the parks, but it is on a Disney Parks card. But it is nice. I mean, it's got Minnie and Mickey on the gondola, and uh, of course they're over the parks. It's got 2019 on there and Disney Skyliner, which that'll be their inaugural season or at least part of a season. And uh, says there's magic in the air is the theme of that. We'll get it up there. So what I liked about this pin is is in the silhouette and the blue down there. I think that they did a nice job of highlighting the destinations for the Skyliner because that's what you see back there. You don't, you know, you can't. You can't get everything in there, but right. obviously the park backgrounds are there, and you've got the Epcot ball is the most obvious of them. And the Tower of Terror. Yeah, well, the Hollywood Tower of Terror. I don't know that they, did they do anything with Riviera? I didn't know. Really... I'm not really seeing anything that would make me think of Riviera. I mean, they've got the, the Eiffel Tower in Epcot as That's well, Epcot, looks like. Yeah. So, but yeah, just a really nice pin. Now, this pin is a silverback official Disney pin trading and of course now they emboss all those but uh, so it is just a normal back and it's got the Mickey heads that of course run off the edge of it so just a really nice pin and happy to add that to my collection it's good size all right so uh, so the other one this is the actual limited edition pin and it's actually considered inaugural flight Inaugural flight is how they did it, but I, I don't know. I, I saw this one and I just thought, man, I just love the design of it. I'm, I'm a sucker for anything, in, even remotely engineering or architectural or anything like that. So I, I think you'll like this one. Now, before I show you the pin, I'm just going to show you the card because the bottom of this card is actually the same design mm -hmm. as the bottom of the rack pin. It's kind of fun. And you can kind of get a better look at how they did that design that we were talking about. And on the back, this is a limited edition of 3,500. So as many Disney pin collectors as there are, being able to put a pin of 3,500 in your collection, uh, they go really quick, like Corey said. I mean, they're... A lot of times people will be standing in the parks waiting for these things to come out so they can snatch them up. I mean, it's very difficult to get the limited edition pins anymore. So very nice, very nice. And in such a way that you can be confident that they're right, authentic. That, they're an authentic that, that does happen from time to time where the limited edition dies get get cast and they show up in the parks as scrappers and you'll find one on a lanyard and think, oh, I got a limited edition. And then you'll find out that so did... 40,000 right people. right <laughs> right oops so yeah that way you know you have an authentic pin and just really nice to add to your permanent collection now my trading pins are very limited right now we just did a big Disney World back in June and traded a ton of pins so I'm very limited but obviously I'm not gonna take a pin for nothing so he's going to look at my trading pins and grab a couple of those that he wants and while he's doing that, I'm going to hold this up for him to explain here in just a minute. As you guys know, I am right now doing my top 10 countdown of my top 10 Halloween Haunted Mansion pins. And I'm up to number 8, I think, on my next video. But this is a collection that they have of Hocus Pocus pins, which I think is all kinds of cool. Now, if he happens to leave here tonight and forget these... Uh, I would really hate that. I'm sure you would. But I do happen to have a board back there just for them, and there's lots of room on it. So, uh -huh. uh, But uh, really kind of a neat set. I'm going to let Corey explain to you how he's acquired these and what they are because it is really kind of neat. Sure. So, uh, so we started this, and so far as I know, and if you know any differently, then obviously comment and, uh, and, and let us know. Um, we started these last year, so the way that we line them up on the card um, is actually in two years. So on the top row here is the pins that were released in 2018, and on the bottom row are the pins that were released in 2019. Um, we, were, uh, we were slow. We were slow when they showed up on Disney Store for the 2019 pins. We bought the 2018 pins online last year, and uh, we were going to do the same thing this year, and, and we missed it. 
So we had to go out and uh, and eBay it. Thankfully, there are some people that have bought them up and and um, are selling some on eBay here and there. And uh, tis the season for Hocus Pocus, right? So that's right. Um, we, but some of them, it's interesting how some of them are kind of the same. That's it. Caught my eye, and and it really felt like not only did we we feel like hey, we gotta have this in our collection, but we felt like oh my gosh, this is a, this is serious. I don't don't see this very often. The candles, you know, they are more like a duo. One candle is inscribed with, um, I lit the black flame candle, and the other candle is, it's just a bunch of hocus pocus. But the real thing that caught our eye was on the three sisters pins, these are identical. The, the actual design of the three sisters are identical, and you can't really tell from looking at it in the, in the video so much, but on the 2018 pin, that's a double posted pin, and they're standing behind the cauldron, and it's a one level flat pin. On the 2019 pin, it's actually a pin on pin design, and their full dresses are shown, but every other feature up top, including these trails that go off on the top and on this side, are identical, virtually the same size, and really just like the exact same die or design was used. And so that just really caught our eye. Everything else was complimentary. And then 2018, thanks. Um, 2018 showed a Hocus Pocus Cauldron and then 2019's fun pin in the set was a, the spell book. Um, but we, I don't know, we just really thought that it was a neat companion set. That's kind of how we're describing it is that the two sets kind of go together. I'm kind of a Hocus Pocus fan, and I know it's a campy movie, and but it's kind of become a cult classic. I think one of the channels this year is playing it every day in October. That would make sense. Don't tell, <laughs> please don't tell my wife what channel that's on. That's the whole reason, really, why we have these pins. But uh, one one neat little piece of trivia about Hocus Pocus: if any of you ever watch um, uh, NCIS with. Uh, that group of actors the actor that plays tim on there is actually the boy that was the brother in hocus pocus so interesting if you ever get a chance to look at that it's kind of kind of neat to see how he's doing all grown up but uh huh. kind of a fun thing but uh wonderful pins i'm really as far as my trading goes right now my big things that i look for trading right now is halloween uh, Nightmare Before Christmas and Haunted Mansion and I'm really big into the Haunted Mansion pins because there's just so much out there and as you have seen probably my first two top 10 pins have been Haunted Mansion pins this year so got a couple of new Skyliner pins got to see the Hocus Pocus pins but it was kind of a neat deal that he has one more thing, kind of a neat story that he was able to get another pin along with these Focus great. Focus pins. You know, we saw this pin when we were at Disneyland this year and, and we didn't buy it. We ended up picking a different Marvel pin, so it was kind of a, a kind of a neat thing. When we bought the Hocus Pocus pin, since we had to go to eBay, um, the eBayer that, uh, that uh, we bought from, which... Uh, don't think there'd be any problem with me repping nope, the eBay or the eBay or uh, Pans Pins, and we'll try to put a link to them on the uh, on we'll, we'll put it down video. In, yeah, we'll and put it down uh, a genuinely nice um, person that I was dealing with there. The shipping costs calculator that had been programmed in, for whatever reason, it misread the location or something was put in there wrong, and it and it. it counted the shipping costs way too high for what this seller usually ships out a, a four card of pins for and uh, I was willing to pay it because it still rang in at a pretty fair price for what everything was going on on eBay so obviously I went ahead with the purchase but they still reached out even though they could have just taken my money and ran and said hey that shipping cost was too high and uh, and uh, they were going to go to eBay and reverse the shipping, but we just put it out there that, hey, we were willing to pay it anyways. If they really felt bad about it, then um, we're collectors, and here's what we collect, and, and throw a surprise in and send it on out. And uh, so we did. And so ended up sending out this uh, nice Marvel pin that's got four four characters on it. So the pin, it actually shows up in a in a diamond 
configuration whenever all four characters are on here. We'll see if we can get it to focus in. So it's got Captain America, Thor, Iron Man, um, and Hulk on the pin. And it, it's a real nice pin. It's very, like I said, one we saw on the rack at, at Disney, and we thought about getting, and we just brought limited budget with us, so it wasn't one that we ended up going home with, but now it ended up in our collection just by happenstance because we're buying from obviously another trader right. and collector that was uh, supplying. And that's the other, and of course this one is marked with the blue color coding on the back of it, so I mean, another thing about Pan's Pins, mm -hmm. P-A-N-S-P-I-N-S mm -hmm. or Z? It's uh, P-A-N-S-P-I-N-S, -S, I think. Yep. Very good. Obviously, it's going to be a reputable person you can go to sure. that's going to sell authentic pins, so you're not going to end up with the counterfeit pins. Um, and I'm sure if you thought you had, they would probably be more than willing to work with you and try to figure it out because yeah. I don't think they're wanting to do that. It's hard to find sometimes, you know, and sift through all the different things that are available out there, especially on the auction sites, because, you know, if you're trying to find authentic pins that you know came from the parks or you know came from the Disney store, you really have to, to scrutinize a little bit. You do, and a lot of times I think, too, you know, you kind of get what you pay for, too. If you're seeing pins out there for a dollar fifty. Yeah you're probably not going to be getting an authentic pin. It's, it's no uh, joke. Because pins, pins cost money. That's yep. all there is to it. I can tell you that the rack price on the Hocus Pocus set for a four-pin set of pins that size and that stature, the rack price, I believe, was nineteen ninety-five, or maybe even was twenty-one or twenty-two ninety-five. And so going into the secondary market on those, I wouldn't expect to be paying any less than $25 because even if, if a purchaser bought them discounted um, in the parks at a significant discount, um, they they still would have to mark it up to be able to do anything on eBay. So 25 would be your rock bottom. I wouldn't expect to pay anything less than that, probably 30 or more for a set like that on the secondary market. If you're paying less than that, it's likely that they're not real pins. Absolutely. And uh, while we're here, because he's got to find some pins to trade for, uh, and this has already become probably my longest pin reveal video that I've ever done, but I'm going to do one more thing. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's all my fault. <laughs> if you will grab out of that bucket right there, there are three more pins on cards Let's do it. that we'll go ahead and reveal tonight. Uh, these, are, uh, these are the Funko Pop Disney pins uh, that that I got from Box Lunch the other day at the same time that I got my blind boxes. But uh, I didn't look. Although I, I don't, reveal why. although I don't own these pins, I'm going to put them up for trade if he wants any of them for the nice Skyliner pins that he brought me. And the reason I can put them up for trade with confidence is that I'll kind of give you a clue right now at Box Lunch if you happen to go shopping on their pop. Disney pins, their Funko Pop Disney pins. Always they have buy two get one free, but on Pop Funko right now it's buy one get two free. That seems a little backwards. <laughs> so that actually works out to about three dollars and thirty cents a pin. That's a pretty fair <laughs> price. <laughs> pin. A, yeah, you can uh, you can build up a pretty good trader board on three dollars and thirty cents. Not bad at all. So the first one is the Funko Pop of. 626, not just Stitch, but he's in his 626 alien suit and he has his four arms and two legs there. We were at Disneyland on June 26th this year and uh, happened upon several uh, places where they were celebrating 626 huh. with some Stitch merchandise. Hey, that's very it was funny. A very, it was a very good day. You know, I uh, didn't get a chance to see it only online, but when they were first putting out Stitch's Great Escape attraction at Disney World, yep. Stitch took over Disney World and he like graffitied the castle and there was all kinds of stuff all around the park that he had been into making a big mess. And it's of not course, surprising. He's rather uh, eccentric. Another attraction that is permanently on seasonal operation. But from what I understand, they've actually already disassembled it all. Uh -oh. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's probably a, do a done deal. All and, right. and they're going to be uh, doing something different. The next one is Mrs. Potts and Chip uh -huh. in a Funko Pop. And the last one I picked up is the Evil Queen. The Evil Queen. <laughs> And the Evil Queen is uh, in her 
dress and it looks to be, looks like a little gem that they've used for a red apple. Maybe, it may be that same glitter material Maybe that the they're glitter using, material? using on the on the dresses. Well, I didn't get my bifocals focused in very well, so yeah, that, that, that very I well could be. Yeah, I call that a glitter material. So anyway, I'll put those up for, uh, for trade as well. Oh, that's so, exciting. So if you want to pick out your trade pins, okay. and uh, we'll get him on his way here in just a minute. It was nice that he was able to come out and join us and to look at all these different pins. And of course, he'll probably take a few minutes to peruse my boards before he gets out of here as well. And I collect all kinds of pins, not just Disney pins. I have collections of McDonald's pins and uh, Lions Club and Elks Club and pins from all the little adventures that the family goes on. If I, anytime I go to a location, whether, you know, it be a zoo or an aquarium or a family attraction somewhere, I try to see if they have a lapel pin available because that's what I choose for my my souvenir and then also it's truly is my belief that these pins are basically little pieces of art. Somebody had to design and put a lot of work into how intricate they make these little cloisonne pins. So I'm going to uh, continue to collect pins. I have a fairly large collection now, but uh, who knows where they go after me, but I'm sure that, that somebody will want to add them to their own collections in time. So, so are you finding anything? You bet. Well, now who did we determine that this bow is? Uh, that is going to be uh, Moana. Moana. And I feel like that's a that's a definite, right? The bows are really nice. Uh, the princess bows, they're big and. And I have to take into consideration too that the limited edition pin, those those don't really qualify for any sort of discounts. So that's a that's a. a heady pricey pen that is a pricey pen it's so a, and and had it not been a son-in-law there's no way in the world i'd have been able just to trade a regular pen for a 3500 limited edition pen you're not going to find that out on the internet no not many, <laughs> not many people are willing to do that most are most are, are wanting to, to do one for one with right, something else yeah, pretty, they're, they're pretty looking, high dollar they're looking for their own grail of pins course and, of course well, that's the nice thing about, again, being able to catch it for that split right. second that you're able to actually purchase it. So probably probably for, to make it fair for a limited edition pin plus one regular card pin, I definitely would want to say uh, two, at least two for the, oh, for absolutely. the limited edition pin. Absolutely. Um, I agree with that. And, uh, and one, for, at least one for the, for the other one. Now, what who is what ride is that? Now I don't know which ride that is. Uh, looking at it, since it's all white, uh, almost looks like it's. It's not. It's not haunted mansion, is it? Uh, it is not haunted. Well, it might be haunted mansion because the other one is Tower of Terror. So that very well could be haunted mansion. It could be a butler's uniform. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, I think I think we'll at least go with at least go with these three if that's if that's amiable to you. And oh, absolutely. If you find one more, grab one more. Okay. Okay. So he's going to go with the Moana bow, the Jack Skellington with the uh, with the uh, glow in the dark effect on it, and the Evil Queen Funk Pop Pop pin. And then he'll look and see if he can't find one more out of my collection. I'm trying to decide if, uh, trying to decide if my wife would want the Little Mermaid dress. Yeah, and that's her wedding dress, so it's a pretty cool one. I bet your wife would probably want that one. She'd probably, she'd probably say yes to that. So there we go. We got them all traded. Guys, make sure and leave comments. I look at every single comment and you can help us figure out a few of these pins that I didn't know what they were as far as the new dresses go. Uh, like I said, I really think the one is Merida. I'm not real sure about the pink and white one. You can uh, let me know because I know somebody out there does. And 
anything else. I mean, we'll start a conversation. We'll get a, a big pin conversation going. Always, I read every comment because I appreciate your time. You take your time to come and watch me for a few minutes out of your day. And just like me, I know your time is precious. So thank you for that. And if you're not already a subscriber, if you're a new friend, make sure and hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can get notified of new stuff that's coming up. And as we go along, like I said, we live in the Midwest, which we're about as far from a Disney park as you can possibly get as far as living. So we kind of swap out with each other. And if somebody gets to go to a park that another one doesn't, we send videos and try to try to get those up for you. Like I said, I call them my peeps in the park because I can't be there, but they are. And uh, hopefully that will improve with uh, DVC and different things out there available to us now. So I think that's about it for the night. I appreciate Thanks. it again. And Thanks, appreciate Dan. Corey for coming this, in. This was fun. Yeah. I appreciated being able to do it's it. It's always fun. And I've got a little grandson, Cademan, who has his own channel out there. I'm going right. to put that out there and I'll put a link to his channel on there as well. Just a fun channel, um, which is a uh, Cademan Cademan Theater. Cademan Theater, and uh, I'll put a link to it down uh, in the uh, in the the I forget what what it's even called. See, that's how old I'm getting. But uh, when you describe what's on your channel, uh -huh. it is a description. Yeah, I'll put it in the description. How's that work? It's all right. Okay, guys, have a great night, and uh, be careful that a ghost doesn't follow you home. Uh oh. <laughs> See you later.